Uh, thanks, Karen. That's, uh, I'll have you know that according to my two kids, I have a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old. This is by far the coolest place I've ever been. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's usually, you know, the National Widget Makers Association. Ah, oh, oh, Dad, we don't care where you go. But on this trip, it was, you're going where? And uh, they're really excited about that. So anyway, just to let you know, just to let you know. Um, whenever I talk to a group uh, about generations, uh, I often get the impression that people have been intimidated by it. It seems like such a big, impersonal, abstract subject. Um, let me see, first of all, if I can roll these forward. Let's just time a slide. So the first thing I want to do is get around that problem uh, by making this whole concept just a bit more personal. Let me show you, uh, just uh, as a step in that direction, uh, this first cartoon. Uh, this shows three sets of high school sweethearts uh, <laughs> contemplating the big step, all right? Now, the point of this cartoon is to bring home to you something that I'm sure that's already occurred to you, and that is that your generational location in life strongly shapes the way you see life. Uh, it doesn't mean you actually had one of these conversations. I'm not going to get a show of hands, you know, but <laughs> I'm sure you can all appreciate how each of these frames says something essential about the youth mood of the time. In the early 1950s, the importance of fitting in, conforming, meeting high social expectations at the earliest possible age, and making long-term life decisions at an early age. In the early 1970s, breaking rules and conventions, taking voyages to the interior. In the early 1990s, getting by, surviving, taking care of yourself in a world in which the rules no longer seem to protect youth anymore. Uh, and the more you look at a, at a cartoon like this, the more other questions are going to occur to you. How is the way each of these couples see life? How is it going to influence the messages they respond to, the products they buy, the candidates they vote for, uh, the careers they choose? I mean, everything. Um, how is the way each of these couples get age over time? How is that going to layer these generations? If this is a 19-year-old couple in 1950, they're going to be the 39-year-olds of 1970. They're going to be the 59-year-olds of 1990. They're going to be the, uh, I don't know what, 73-year-olds today. And you begin to think about that. What, how does this layering work? Because this will stay with them as they grow older. And finally, if we look at a pattern like this, what can we say about the next couple? 20 years further into the future, say in the year 2010, what conversation will they be having? And will it be as different from these three as these three from each other? And I'm going to return to that uh, at, the end of, uh, at the end of my remarks here. Unless you happen to like flip through Millennials Rising and see the right cartoon, you can actually get a preview. But, well, as you can see, this is a, um, a backdoored way of introducing the whole concept of generations. There's a lot of things that, that go into defining a generation. It's a, a group of people born at a certain time, we're talking about social generations, about the, over the length of a phase of life, about 20 years or so, about the time from birth until coming of age fully as an adult. And to be a generation, you have to have attitudes and behaviors in common, you have to have self-identification, you also have to have a distinct location in history. We define, for instance, the GI generation as those Americans who came of age into adulthood and participated in the New Deal in World War II. The silent generation is defined as those Americans who grew up as children during that era, came of age afterwards. The boomers, by definition, have no memory of World War II. That's how we define them. Uh, they grew up as kids during the American high, but they do have some memory of America before the American high was over. They can recall early in life the assassination of John Kennedy, for instance. Um, Generation X are the children of the consciousness revolution. Uh, they've been coming of age afterwards. And millennials are the next generation. They, they actually were born and raised after the consciousness revolution was over. Millennials are a post-awakening generation in much the same way that boomers are a post-crisis generation. And you begin to start thinking of generations in that terms. And you look because if you think about the long span of American history, it gives you much better perspective on the contrasts that are possible, and more perspective, long-term perspective.